I'm Charlie. Welcome to Moving Home with Charlie and thank you for coming. Don't overpay. Do buy, but don't overpay. That's why I say disregard the guff. So if I really hold, hold my tummy in, it looks okay. But if I relax at all or sit down, then I'm afraid I'm going to start popping buttons off. I can't believe I didn't check this out. I, can I just put on my grey t-shirt and see what that's like? Maybe my check shirt. Can I go on national telly like this? I'm asking you for your opinion. Yeah, I think you look cool. You look like one of the people now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm terribly posh, but I am one of the people. Um, Alex Grandwater also told me that I should, <laughs> he said, have a double whiskey. No more than that, but have a double whiskey before you go. And, uh, you know, he said just... <laughs> oh God, no, you don't need a double whiskey. Okay, I'm gonna go, I, I yeah, okay. You, you're gonna watch, right? I can't wait to see you on TV. Okay, listen, I, I won't say goodnight now because I'll give you a call straight afterwards, okay? I think a small. Not a large one, but a small whiskey. Won't do any harm. This is a terrible idea, isn't it? Stop procrastinating. Cut the door keys, wallet, phone. Hi there, I'm your passenger for 605. I just wondered which direction you're coming from. Yeah, you for Charlie? And we're going to uh, GB News. Huh? Albert Embankment? The TV studios. Do you know where it is? I don't know. Westminster Tower. What's the, um, what's our ETA? 14 minutes. 14? Yeah. Oh, cool, that's not long. I was having a conversation with Alex Groundwater, my quant guy, about what I should what I should be saying in this interview, my first live national broadcast TV interview. <laughs> and he said, he made a very good point, which is, well, you can either go on and be nice and vanilla and everyone will forget you, or you can go on and say something that grabs people's attention, as long as you've got the courage of your convictions. So here I am in the in the car on the way to the studios, still not sure what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I've got a conflict between my inner rebel that wants to stir it up and try and make a difference and my well-behaved, well-mannered, posh boy brought up, you know, don't make, a, don't make a fuss, which no one will remember. I'm just going to remind myself the mission is here, which is to actually get a home for everyone. They're not going to be doing extreme close-ups. No one's going to be seeing my paws, but what's it called? Pressed powder. I'm ceremoniously thrown out of my taxi. This is the tower. I do you love London? A very angry cyclist. Hello. TV News? Charlie Lambden, I'm a guest on Nigel Farage's show. I've got to pick that on the guest list. Okay, do you want to make your way both through the gates here and the fifth floor? Fifth floor. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's exciting. Not really feeling ready, but hey, here goes nothing, right? Got to say thanks to my agent, Julia, for getting this interview as well. Thank you, Julia. Uh, yes. Oh, can I have your name, please? Charlie Lambden. Oh, okay. If you just come with me, please. Come this way. <laughs> it's like in the headmaster's office. <laughs> this way. Yeah. Yes, this is, uh, this is the green room. Yeah. 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 Right. Are you wearing this jacket in? Yes. Okay. Try to avoid touching the mic. Yeah, this is what they want. I'm um, on straight after this guy. It's that time, it's Talking Pint. Property expert and advisor Charlie Lambden joins me on the program. <laughs> Welcome yes. to Talking Pint. But before we get into housing, which is probably the biggest elephant in the political room at the moment in terms of what's going on in our country and people's hopes and aspirations. But what interested me, Charlie, was you're involved with homeschooling at the moment. And I 
I've known people in Britain and America that I in school. Mm. Um, I think when you think ahead, like my kids are young, you know, 15, 20 years from now, what's the world going to be like? Nobody really knows. So whether or not just the, the standard academic curriculum is going to be the best for them or not, yeah, my, my choice is I, I'd rather take that responsibility on. And I get to spend more time with my kids while they're small, which is just magical. You know, moving home with Charlie, this is, this is your big pitch these days. So let's just have a big think about this very important thing that is the property market and it comes in a whole variety of ways you know how much of a mess are we in with all of that take the rental market take the unaffordability of property yeah it's, it's especially acute in london but it, it's across the country and i i, I think it's as it, it's as bad as it's ever been in, in in my lifetime we're now facing severe economic problems gdp is made up over 20 percent of gdp is made up out of housing we're looking at, in my opinion, peak to trough house price falls of 35% over, I think, roughly three years. And I, I was talking to my audience on the Moving Home with Charlie the YouTube channel, and I, and I said to them, an economy that doesn't allow a full-time employed person to live in a decent home isn't a functioning economy. No, I get that. If the government were to borrow money to build renting, rented, rentable housing stock mm. for low to middle income people, which it kept and owned and made as affordable rental accommodation for people who are in full time employment or not, whatever, they would create competition for the private sector. They would create huge amounts of jobs. And by the way, this would have to be high tech, high quality, long lasting home stock. I just think government generally makes an absolute mess of everything it does. Mm -hmm. It has to be done well. And that's the problem. Yeah. It's an intractable one. It's not easy. Good idea. Thank you. Interesting. Thanks, Nigel. I have two pints of Guinness. So, feeling quite, quite chirpy, and that sneaky whiskey I had before I left home. Based on the feedback, I've got no, I never know how it's gone from sitting there. I don't know what it looked like. Thanks very much. Nice. Good night. Well, what was going on in there? What was the event then? Well, I, that, that's the GB News oh, right. studio. I've just been on the Nigel Farage show. <laughs> yes. Oh, that, was my, that was my first ever live TV broadcast. And I haven't yet had a chance to watch it back, but I've had some messages from my family. My mum thought it went well. Brilliant, what were you talking about? The housing crisis, affordability. Um, I, I, I'm always, you know, some of my followers on, on YouTube were, were very unhappy that I was gonna go and t talk to Nigel Farage. And I just said, I'm here to spread my message about housing to anyone who wants to listen. I'm not, I don't, you know, and it's good to talk. It's just not right that people who are in full-time employment and good jobs can't afford a good home. Oh, nice chat. A nice chat. A nice chat with a nice chat. That felt great. I'm going to watch it now. I left my phone in that taxi and thanks to the amazing lost mode that you can use with Apple with your Find My iPhone. I managed to ping the phone and send him a, send the cabbie a message and he's just called me. So I'm off to meet him to get my phone back, which is a massive relief. That phone is a tyrant, but it's my, it's, doesn't even bear thinking about what happened if I lost that phone.